everybody, what's up? I'm here to review 600 Miles. It's a Mexican film, it's about a young weapons smuggler who works for a deadly cartel, and the ATF agent who is about to apprehend him, but it just so happens that it is actually he who ends up being kidnapped by the kid himself. And the kid comes up with this plan, he wants to take him to his bosses so they can extract some information from the lawman, but during their 600 mile long drive, they actually start bonding, and thus we have our movie. Now ever since I first saw this film a year and a half ago, I have been waiting for a chance to rewatch and review it, and initially I wanted to start this review by boldly saying that I think it is criminally underrated by its audience, luckily not so much by its critics, but after rewatching it and giving it some thought, I think I actually did come to the conclusion that this film really isn't for everyone, and not because it is some sort of pretentious, uh, surrealist piece of cinema, far from it, uh, quite the contrary in fact, this is about as unflashy and as restrained and as unspectacular as a film can get. Visually and tonally, the film is incredibly dry, incredibly flat, the dialogue is incredibly sparse, and this is in no small part fueled by the fact that Tim Roth and Christian Ferrer play hostage and kidnapper, so you can imagine that communication isn't always going to be friendly or pleasant, it's going to be quite hostile, and obviously Tim Roth's character doesn't speak Spanish, and Christian's character doesn't really speak good English, so there's also that language barrier thing as well. The film really doesn't seem interested in the details of the plot, it really doesn't seem to want to go into the mechanics of the world of gun trade, rather it wants to explore how a naive, young, but ultimately compassionate person like this character is drawn into this sort of activity because of some sort of false sense of heroism, let's say, uh, literally believing that this is something that will make him look cool and impress the people around him. But on the flip side of things, it is obvious from the get-go that he is not cut out for this job, which doesn't prove to be that much of a detriment, at least until he still has his faithful friend helping him out, and believe me, I'm using words like friendly and faithful very loosely here, once you will watch the movie you will understand why, but eventually his partner literally flees from the film, and he basically ends up being on his own. Now as I said, the film is very flat, it is completely filmed in this very cinema verite, very handheld camera style, and but that doesn't mean that it lacks any sort of imagination. No, there are actually two shots which really left a lasting impression on me even the first time I saw the film, and they really serve as a testament to the film's quality as a whole. The film really goes for this sort of show and don't tell, or at least show more than you are telling approach, and these two shots, these two scenes actually in the film really illustrate that point very clearly, because during certain scenes, uh, you, you really do understand that certain characters are more in control of the situation than others, even though the narrative might suggest otherwise. Like the space a character occupies in a given frame, uh, the angle at which a, a certain character might indirectly stare at another character, it really reveals so much, it tells you so much more than if, than if these scenes were filmed in a much more stereotypical, much more unimaginative way, like in a much more commercial film. Our two main characters have very good chemistry, the performances are very good, uh, they're very three-dimensional characters, even Tim Roth's character, to whom there is a lot more than meets the eye initially. And uh, I don't know, about it not being for everyone, this is a very short film, it's only an hour and 23 minutes long, but it's a very slow burn. I really do think that this film only truly satisfies and only truly comes full circle right at the very end. And when I say the very end, I do mean the very end, I mean the end credits. Please, if you're watching this, don't turn the film off after the end credits credits start, because that's when you'll find out the most valuable information there is to find out in this film. So I enjoyed this film, it stuck with me, I'm glad I rewatched it, and yeah, I recommend it. Thanks for watching my review, folks, as always, I will continue to make... what the fuck am I saying here? No, uh, I should be saying thanks for watching, and I will see you later with other reviews. Fuck that up, I always do, forgive me, love you guys, goodbye.